That was Anita Cenerini, this year's Silver Cross mother, laying a wreath this morning at the Remembrance Day ceremony in Ottawa. For 98 years, the cross was presented to mothers of Canadian soldiers killed during active duty. But this year marked the first time it was given on behalf of a soldier who died from suicide after returning home. Private Thomas Welch took his own life on May 8, 2004, at the age of 22. He was deemed the first veteran of the Afghanistan mission to die by suicide, but he was certainly not the last. I visited Anita Cinerini at her home in Winnipeg to talk about Thomas, what he means to her, and what he went through. So when they asked you to become the Silver Cross mother, mm -hmm. why did you agree? Because of the season that we're in in this country, at a national level, the awareness to mental health, the awareness of mental illness, um, and within the military, the awareness of mental illness and um, operational stress injuries, the number of soldiers who've come home from Afghanistan and have taken their own life. Tell me what, what Thomas was like. He was a very loving individual. He had a huge heart. And when you say he had a huge heart, how did that manifest itself? He loved easily and um, he was very compassionate and caring to people and their situations. He was protective of the people that he loved, especially the women that he loved. <laughs> he took his sister um, to her prom. Oh, really? He escorted her wow. in his formal uniform. Wow. Mm -hmm. He loved being in nature. It wouldn't be beyond Thomas to say, can we go to the waterfall today, Mom? And we'd all go and he would just, we'd all wander off and sit on our own special little rock. So why did he decide to join the military? Because it wasn't, it's not something that's in your family. No. It's not something you passed on to him. Where did that come from? Thomas decided that he would join the military and um, he would do the three years and then he would leave and he would have some experience, a foundation that he then could work towards becoming a police officer. And that's, a, that's how it started. Was there something around 9-11 too where he saw? Yeah, yeah. He, so he signed up in the end of August 2001 and uh, September 11th, we were in the living room, uh, Thomas, Jacob, and I, and um, we saw the news footage mm -hmm. on television, and we were both shocked and horrified, and um, I started to talk right away about, you know, what this would mean, and Thomas said that he was pretty sure that he would have to go to war. And I said, Thomas, you don't have to stay in the military, you can leave. And I was crying. Just the thought of him going. And he came and he sat beside me. And I had Jacob in my arms and he put his arms around me and and he said, well, Mom, they need me now more than ever. When he was over there, um, did you realize immediately that it, he wasn't doing well? He came home in October for his first, for his leave. And it was then that I noticed what did you notice? Just, he wasn't sleeping and um, he was agitated and um, 
he uncharacteristically um, didn't want to be home. When he went back, um, he began to deteriorate in my eyes um, because he was calling me home. And, and one of the notable things were um, Christmas time because I was sending care packages every week. Um, but he was adamant that we send nothing at Christmas. And that really concerned me enough that um, at the base where I was dropping off the care packages, I actually asked to speak to someone. Mm -hmm. I was assured that because he was so young, and this was his first deployment, that um, what he was experiencing was normal, mm -hmm. and how he was reacting was normal, and um, wasn't normal to me as his mom who knew him. When he came back, did you see him right away? Did you talk to him? Well, he was sometimes crying in the phone calls. And um, sometimes angry. And um, I encouraged him to get help. And he said that there was no help available to him. It took a long time for them to give you any answers, right? It took a long time for the answers and for them to, to recognize why it had happened. Yeah. Yeah, it did. I believed that Thomas suffered while he was in Afghanistan. And he came home and he didn't receive the help that he needed. I knew that. I believed it. It was the truth that I knew in my heart. And somehow, I just knew that one day the truth would come out. Thomas's ashes are still here, and it's mm -hmm. been thir 13 years, 14 years? 14 years. 14 years since his death. Yeah. And you held on to them, and now that there is, I get closure's a weird word, but there's a, 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 there's a conclusion to, to that part of the story. Can you let them go? Can you bury the ashes? Can you? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> everything is a process. <laughs> um, yeah, well, there were practical reasons mm -hmm. why we didn't have Thomas's ashes buried right away. Um, but the other reason was um, I was determined. I, I w was always determined from the beginning that um, and believed that Thomas's death would be classified as being attributable to service. And to lay him to rest in a place that not just honored who he was as a person, but to have his ashes rest in a place that um, fun to give him honor, the honor that he deserved. And when you're sitting there on Remembrance Day in the cold in front of the, the cenotaph, what will you be thinking? I'm honored to to represent other mothers 
who've lost a son or daughter in service to their country. But I also think about the soldiers who have their boots on the ground right now. Um, it's important to honor them. But since Thomas's death, I also especially think of the soldiers who have come home with wounds that we can't see, that they deal with every day. He'd be proud of you. I hope so. Private Thomas Welch's death by suicide is far from an isolated case. Since 2010, 130 Canadian soldiers and veterans have killed themselves. Research has shown that young male former soldiers are 242% more likely to take their own lives than the general population. And last year, the Liberal government released a suicide prevention strategy involving both Veterans Affairs and the Department of National Defence to try and reduce the number of suicides.